The Charge Blade is one of the most versatile weapons in Monster Hunter World, transforming between its default sword and board form and its big hitting two-handed giant axe form. There's one ability the weapon has in particular that I really want to focus on today. It's called Savage Axe, and it's a mode that transforms the weapon not only into its axe form, but into a spinning pizza cutter axe form. It's really powerful, but also exceptionally cool. For a more comprehensive full weapon overview, you can check out my charge blade guide I've already done. That goes into much more detail about all of the moves that are available with the weapon, helping you to become a goddamn charge blade master. I'm Light It Up Dan, and on the channel I love to produce content that aims to reduce the overwhelm and unknown of the Monster Hunter games. Just very quickly, a massive thank you to those of you who have really turned up and gotten us to around 80% of unsubscribed viewers on the channel. With the majority of you returning, if you enjoy the videos, do subscribe. And with that said, let's get to it. Getting into Savage Axe mode is simple enough. First you need to build up charge with your weapon. Achieved, of course, by landing your sword and board hits, and primarily by doing the charged double slash attack. Once you've built up that ready orange charge, the one after yellow, you can then charge your files and get all five loaded up. You can activate Savage Axe right now if you want to, because you only need loaded files. However, I do recommend that you charge up your shield first, as the additional 10% bonus damage you get for Axe form does translate over to Savage Axe as well. Not only that, but the additional ticks from Savage Axe actually get the 10% buff as well, so it's very much worth your time to do so. Just keep in mind that you don't have to, which is very beneficial in certain situations as well. Either way, once your files are ready, set up to unleash an SAED, and press left trigger instead to do the Savage Slash. This will put you into Power Axe mode, the Savage Axe form. Yo, now we cook in. In this mode, you'll have the same attacks that you do in your standard axe form with the Charge Blade. However, now the head of the axe is spinning like a pizza cutter like we mentioned before and it shreds through, doing several additional hits in tick damage, adding up to a ton of additional damage getting dished out. It's so crazy good, I absolutely love this, and subscribe to it as my main form of damage output, over the old school SAED style. That's not to say that you just do one and not the other, there are opportunities to sort of mix and match, but generally speaking, you're going to gravitate towards one style or another. As mentioned, you've got access to the same axe attacks that you normally do, the loopable Y attack from a rising slash to an overhead slash, which you can actually initiate with a fantastic gap closing dash slam attack if you're holding forward on the left stick. You've also got access to the elemental discharge combo string using the B button or circle, going from elemental discharge 1 to 2 to 3 three with the SAED if you want to go for it. This is very modular so you can switch between the Y combo and the B combo, which can be beneficial to not launch your teammates if you don't want to use the rising slash around them. But I say send them f***ing flying. Another reason you want to be mindful of not tapping into the elemental discharge too often, or maybe not even at all, is that of course it's going to consume your files as you use the combos. Both element discharge 1 and 2 in the combo use a file each. Savage Act requires you to have active files and will slowly consume them as you go. So spanking them out quickly with elemental discharge is going to mean you're going to have to top them up really fast. Which is fine if that's what you want to do, you can do so. You're able to switch back into sword and board form, charge up your weapon and stock up the files again. In fact, you're encouraged to do so before your files run out, as Savage Axe only requires you to have active files available. You can, technically, activate it at the start and have it running for the entire hunt, but of course using your files to recharge your shield which only lasts for a limited time, or activating any SAEDs is going to consume all of your files and automatically deactivate Savage Axe mode. Even if you stay on top of it, in practice you will have to reactivate it when you need to recharge your shield even with three power prolonger on your build. Amongst the many reasons I absolutely love Savage Axe, one of them is that you can dish out so much damage so quickly with relatively very little commitment, especially when you're comparing it up against SAED. You're not hanging up everything on this one move to land, hoping you find this perfect window, this perfect opportunity, and that when it does come around, you're ready, you've got your files loaded up, you're in a perfect position for it. It's doable, yeah, people absolutely slay with it. But man, I just have so much more fun with Savage Axe, it's great. 
The verticality of the loopable Y combo with the overhead smash and the rising slash is so good for hitting monsters' weak points for hitting their tails, for hitting their heads, and the amount of part breaks you'll get in Savage Axe mode is crazy. It absolutely shreds them. Speaking of shredding, it does absolutely chew through your weapon's sharpness. You are absolutely going to need to be mindful of that. Of course, the full Fatalis set with Razor Sharp is going to help with that a lot, but if you're not using that instead of using Frostcraft or whatever, just keep it in mind, maybe think about ways you could mitigate it, or just shred with reckless abandon, I guess. I don't know. Also worth noting that the extra ticks in Savage Axe mode benefit from elemental damage bonuses. So putting your weapon into Savage Axe against Alatreon is going to be very effective in getting the elemental topples. This is to do with the elemental damage modifiers that are applied to the tick attacks. Nothing you need to dive into too much, but it's just, it's good. It's also a reason why you don't actually need an elemental file charge blade to go up against Alatreon. So the Frostfang Barriathon, which utilizes impact files, is actually a fantastic choice. Just throw it into Savage Axe mode and shred it. That said though, the elemental file charge blades are absolutely fantastic in Savage Axe mode, specifically versus Alatreon. The elemental modifiers on the ticks do get a pretty hefty bonus if the charge blade is a power element file weapon. The Safi Jiva Frost charge blade is going to be a fantastic option. Or of course, the Kulv Taroth Kia Frost charge blade. Take it into an ode to the destruction and watch it absolutely tear through Nergagante's horns. Maybe hop into a farewell to Zenoga event as well. Literally grinding out those part breaks so you can pick up all your fuel or your coal. Or take yourself to a brand new brute to stock up on powerful armor spheres each time you get these part breaks. You're going to be the lord of king and true armor spheres. Like a boss. Whatever it is, you're going to be able to absolutely rip and tear through, shredding through your enemies. Are you a fellow Savage Axe enjoyer like myself? If so, you have excellent taste, and you're likely very attractive. What hunts do you like to use it on? Have you not used it before? Do you subscribe to the SAED school instead? Let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear from you. Once again, if you are looking for a full comprehensive charge blade overview and guide, I have already done that where I go over all of the weapons mechanics and moves to a pretty in-depth level which will give you everything you need and much more to understand the weapon and take it out to go and explore with it. If you're looking for a mature community that runs open sessions across all platforms for Monster Hunter World and Monster Hunter Rise, come and join the Discord. We've got people playing there every single day. And I also run open sessions during the live streams over here on YouTube and on Twitch as well. I will leave all of these links for you in the description. We actually just recently surpassed 1,000 Discord members as well, which is a super dope milestone to hit. As mentioned at the start, you folks have really turned up and gotten us to around 80% of unsubscribed viewers on the channel, with the majority of you returning. If you enjoy the videos, do subscribe. I'm hoping to one day get that down to 50%. A lofty goal, I know, but maybe we can make it happen. Thanks for watching, and until next time, I'll see you in the new world.